Dang, that was awesome. Yeah. Whew. It was a good run. Lots of hills. Lots of consistency. No stopping till now. But this is a beautiful vantage point. If that's the right word to use. Scenery, whatever. A little bit grotesque though, considering this is a cemetery. All right, so what you're supposed to do in order to run better is by simply going out there and just doing it. I mean, there's no other way. You can sit there and ponder upon it. You can sit there and dwell on it, think about it, watch other people run, watch me run, whatever. But until you actually go out there and do it, you're not gonna get better. Now, to get more basic, a few tips would be doing some light stretching, very light. You don't need to do very much stretching. It's a repetitive motion. Your legs are going to naturally build. Now, this is based on my experience and another YouTuber um, who's been running for over 18 years has a two hour, 17 minute marathon under his belt. Uh, basically, always trains for like, you know, the Olympic. Uh, trials and stuff like that um, He says the same thing and a bunch of other people a lot of research that you don't have to do really anything more than five to ten minutes of stretching and To be honest, you don't even have to do that stretching until after your run But since you're a beginner you Definitely should stretch even before just to loosen things up just to get the blood flowing Even doing a warm-up beforehand just maybe walking for about five the 10 minutes before getting into your jog pace and start slow you don't want to get injured the very first day um, that's not good and excuse the rain all right so what you also have to focus on is getting your fuel prior to doing your run because if you run out of gas you're going to be done it's not going to look good you're gonna, you know, tap out really early into your run. You may even get cramps as well. So definitely get your fuel and also get your hydration. You don't want to overheat. Sweating is trying to get your... Now, if you um, get too overheated, your body can go in the shock. And then you're definitely done. And that can cause irreversible damage. So you don't want that to happen. Um, irreversible damage is not good. Um, you also have to pick a pair of shoes that are suitable for running. You don't want to just go in boots or uh, sandals. You also want to worry about the type of gear that you're going to be having on. I mean, if it's 90 degree weather, like it is, well, it was 90 something degrees earlier. It's probably around 80, 82 right now. Um, you don't want to wear jeans during your run because then you'll simply overheat a lot faster. So wear appropriate gear for the weather conditions. And also if you're indoors, if you don't have an air conditioner or a fan going, also be dressed for that. I mean, preferably be naked so you don't have to worry about any type of um, heat from being enclosed with your body. And that's the first reason. The second reason, too, is added weight. Even if you're just wearing just shorts, I mean, that's still some weight. And then once you start sweating, your sweat's going to go inside of your shorts, and that's going to add even more weight. And it's also a way to affect your stride because everything's flopping around. So definitely just try to wear as much less, like, little as possible definitely wear as little as possible um, now back to shoes so wear comfortable tennis shoes comfortable sneakers um, the shoes I wear I wear Brooks so I'm always I always have a pair of Brooks on I've been wearing Brooks for eight months now and I'll never go back to any other brand I'm not even gonna mention the brand that I was that I used to wear which is pretty obvious. I mean, most people wear that specific brand. You probably already know what that brand is. Right when I was starting to explain what I, you know, that I used to wear a different brand. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, I just don't even like talking about this. I mean, it's just one of those things where I have like a short collection. Not because I'm collecting shorts, but because I'm not going to be outside running in the same type of, you know, the same clothes every day. So, yeah. I do have a few shirts of that brand too. So on a very you know, special occasion, I'll wear shirts for uh, when I run. But, you know, there's a lot of jokes about people that barely wear shirts, like, you actually own a shirt? Or, you know, get a shirt on or whatever. Well, again, I don't want to overheat. I'm burning up right now. So I can only imagine how I'd feel if I was actually wearing a shirt trying to run. Um, the most I wear is a beater, and that's based on the weather conditions, which really is very scarce because it's typically during spring, but the very first like three weeks, four weeks of spring is basically, you know, the transitional period, the summer, to where that shirt's coming right, that beater's coming right off. Now, the second one would be fall, and during the fall, again, transitionary period to where Basically, I won't be outside running anyway because I don't like, I don't enjoy running in the cold. I mean, your risk of, you know, injury goes up from the ice, um, your face always being blasted with snow, and just the weather, it's just not enjoyable. It's not like a good feeling, like sitting under the sun right now with the rays just, you know, making me feel warm, burning my skin, whatnot. It feels great. It's not too hot. It's just, it's just nice. So, with that in mind, when I'm on the treadmill, I wear a beater because it's basically the gym policy to wear something. If I didn't have to, I would not. And on some rare occasions, I take the beater off at the gym, and that's just very rare because it depends on a which gym I'm working. Or I said working. I'm used to working at gyms. Sorry. Well, I guess that considers it as well. But a the gym I'm at at the time and B just what time of the day I'm there and like I said who's working so typically I'll be wearing a beater now depending on the day uh, it's kind of silly because I don't really discriminate against which color of beater I'm gonna be wearing but typically the white beaters or white tank tops are preferred because the heat absorption isn't as high as let's say a black one or even a gray one so you will be cooler but again I don't want to wear the same style each day so I will switch it up I've even on occasion wore a blue one but I don't really have I don't have that one anymore and I just basically buy the white black and gray ones they just come in a pack they're cheap because even though a beater's a beater, eventually it does get stretched out, worn out. So I just buy those constantly. And basically, I'm not wearing a pair right now, uh, but socks. Get yourself either some compression socks in order for all of your joints to basically be intact, like your calves not flopping around, and I mean that's really it like the calves I mean unless you're wearing your socks up super high but again exposure getting yourself too hot with the heat so just basically if you're gonna wear the compression ones they're good for uh, reducing injury because everything is you know just packed up tightly just that pressure helps but then the trade-off is the heat so I typically wear either no-show, which depends on the size of the no-show and also the brand because some just simply ride down and then that can cause a lot of friction between the back of your shoe to your Achilles tendon and that's just not comfortable and you're going to be in pain, it's going to make the skin break and it's just an annoyance. When you're running intensely you have to be very mindful, you have to be um, just full concentration. You have to have full concentration on your run. That way you can focus on your, your stride, your breathing, just the elements. Not having a disaligned step or unaligned step. And just watching your surroundings. 
And that's another thing too. So a lot of people will tell me to wear this type of headphone or that type of headphone. Ones that aren't noise canceled. So, or the ones that don't go like in your ears too deeply or on your, on your ears too deeply. See, so that way you can hear cars. Well, knock on, I don't feel like moving over to get that tree. Uh, I guess there's some bark, so knock on wood on that stick. I've never gotten into a running accident. I've gotten injured running. Anyway, so back to the whole headphone thing. Yes, I do wear these right here. Um, I was always against these type of headphones, uh, the specific brand. I forget if I said the word or not. I probably did, but if I didn't, whatever. You already know what they are anyway, just by looking at them. But I'm not trying to endorse any company that I don't support, even though I am wearing them. However, the only support, oh, I'm sorry, the only reason for the support of me getting these in the first place was one, they were on sale. Two, the waterproof element. Three, because it's kind of nasty, but not really. But, you know, some people have pet peeves about, like, putting on other people's stuff. Or for this case, well, not this headphones case, but this specific type of headphone, I guess. I was shopping at a store, and I seen that they were on display. So I was like, screw it. Put them on my ears, tilted my head back, and I'm like, all right, sweet. These didn't fall off. So I didn't want them to fall off while I was exercising, um, working out or whatever. So luckily when I told them my head back, they stayed on. So let's say if I were to bench press, so my head has to be flat on the bench. I want to stay focused. I don't want my headphones to fall off my head while I am lifting, because that'll just, again, break concentration, which is a no-no. So I didn't break the concentration because I got the headphones. So I was so used to wearing the ones that kind of like go around your ear, just little buds that go inside that have the little attachment, little fins or whatever that go in or around your ear. But the earbuds quality, I mean, they're not as good. The bass isn't there. And being that it's connected inside your ear, it's blocking your ear canals, which can really cause a lot of hearing damage, which to be honest with you has happened to me through messing with a lot of stupid different things with music, sounds, just being a, being a dummy. So my hearing isn't the best. My eyes are pretty dang good. I can see very far away. I can see nice closely. I don't need glasses. Um, and I was a kid, I used to kind of stare in the sun a little bit. I'm fine, to my knowledge. Colors are vibrant. And that's also about health. What you eat, what you drink. I mean, we learned as kids to eat carrots, good for your eyesight. But really, just eating healthy in general will help all of your cells, which will inevitably promote good eyesight. So, yeah, my eyes are good. So I'm able to see, like, when cars are coming. Um, I don't drive. That's another topic. Um, I can drive. I just don't. But I still understand the road laws, and I understand how traffic lights work. So I basically am able to run across the streets without any um, problem. So basically, if you're running outside, you should be very cautious. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. It's all trial and error. It's all experience. Your results will vary based on you. But with me, let's say if there are cars coming, I don't want to just stop, stand there and wait for the cars to be done. I'm going to basically make a turn and go down until those cars aren't in my uh, line of sight or if they're just not on the road anymore then I'll cross and then turn around and go back rather than just waiting and then going straight I'll go down forward back and then up just to keep myself going because it also breaks my concentration whenever I have to stop running for anything and then getting back into my stride also I try to go as far as I can without stopping that is my run and I try to get farther and farther each time. Now, it doesn't always happen that way, but that's okay. As long as you get your mileage in per week, that's fine. 
That doesn't mean do a mile, wait two hours, do another mile, wait two hours, and that's three miles or whatever. But try to just get your mileage in with a, you know, consistent enough routine. So if you do 10 miles today, and even if you skip tomorrow, the next day, do 15 because you healed. And you can be definitely do 15 because you just did 10, and then what's another five more? And that's fine. Even if you have to slow it down, you got it. But don't do like five, skip a day, and do like seven. No. do If you're going to do five, then do ten. But really, yeah, I guess it does depend on your fitness level. So I'll say for more of a basic approach. If you do two miles today, tomorrow, if it's your second day of running or jogging, do two miles again. But try to do those two miles faster than you did yesterday. Now, if your legs are hurting, skip day three. Day four, do a slower pace, but do four miles. I'm telling you, you're gonna really build your cardiovascular system and your legs very strong. Day five comes along, you just did four miles. You could even skip day five. Now, day six, do four miles again, but try to do them faster. Day seven comes along, do one mile, in the morning and then at night do another mile so that's two so you didn't take a rest day you just you still ran and that's getting your body into a strange pattern a strange habit to where it's always going to keep itself guessing and you're still going to be building taking rest is important do not neglect rest don't do your run and then go about your daily life and then at night stay up all night playing video games or watching tv and then only getting three or four hours of sleep and then you know being too tired to run because one yeah you're not going to be able to run that next day efficiently you're going to be too tired and then two you won't be able to run as long if you like well, i guess that is about the efficiency um two it's going to vector in to your routine which will then mess up the next day because you're not progressing you are i was going to say digressing degressing you are not you're just not progressing <laughs> anyway so depending on the type of running that you're trying to do if you're trying to get into sprinting that's a whole nother field I am NOT a sprinter by any means but I understand the fundamentals you're basically spending about just about the same amount of time on the ground as you are in the air you can't maybe go on the bike to help improve your running because your stride's gonna drastically change the, the tempo just the muscle groups it's gonna focus on so going on the bike to train for running can be beneficial however you should definitely focus on running more than anything if you want to become a better runner I was reading an article where it talked about people that worked like strength trained their legs to become a better runner it doesn't work that way you have to do the running motion to get better at the running motion you can't do leg press and get better at the running motion in the experience of running even if it even if running does strengthen your legs and leg press does it's just two different things now you could do light leg press to strengthen your legs to get stronger legs to practice with running but don't let that be your staple for running, for training, for run training. Run to run, run for running. Now, one way that that kind of um, differentiates from walking, the way I started doing it is I started um, walking into jogging. So I would jog until I got tired and then I would walk until my lungs felt better until I got my breath back and then I jog until I lose my breath and then I walk until I caught my breath and I just kept doing it and doing it that's doing intervals and intervals are really good for burning calories very fast uh, it has a sprinter like approach and a little bit in the sense where you are doing a higher speed into a slower speed and you're intervaling that now 
that really helps for different things. It helps for just getting your heart rate to spike higher than its normal threshold and then it's going to drop. So you're not going to get a heart attack. You're not going to basically get your heart out of uh, rhythm or anything like that. You're just getting it to spike so you're going to burn more calories. So then you're going to lose weight. So then once you lose weight, you're going to be a better runner. So that's another tip. You want to lose weight. <clears throat> For every pound that you have of fat especially, but even muscle applies, um, that's about 18 seconds added to every mile. It's that serious. So if you're 150 and then you go up to 155, that's many seconds. It's 18 seconds times 5. So, yeah, it's a few minutes. Um, that's not good. Especially if you are trying to be a an elite runner. I mean, if you were doing a two hour 18 minute marathon I mean those two minutes might not seem like a lot but it is if second place is 30 seconds behind you because that two minutes which means they're they're ahead of you if they're three minutes away you still won if it's only two minutes but if they're even a minute 59 they won by 0.1 they won by a second so that doesn't mean get too skinny either because you still need some type of strength, some weight, but it should be based on your current fitness level. It should also be based on your height and also your body mass index in general because muscle weighs more, but not even just because of that. Um, fat has more um, size, it's just more mass when it comes to that. So that added bit of size is gonna slow you down. I'd rather be 150 pounds of rock solid uh, muscle than 150 pounds of fat. And if you're fat, then your energy is going to naturally be compromised because your fat is absorbing those nutrients that you need, but the muscle isn't. So, the moral of the story is to get your body fat down. Reduce your body fat. And then you'll be, you'll be a lot better off. Trust me. I mean, I'm probably 10 pounds more than I should be muscle but I mean I'm okay with that as far as how my physique goes I'm probably 20 30 pounds too light to have a really nice physique however for running I'm probably about even maybe even 15 pounds too too heavy when I did my when I ran the Pittsburgh Marathon um, last year I was uh, I was at a good weight I was like 155 and I was much more cut much more lean so with that in mind um, definitely burn calories and the beauty thing is running is going to help you do that so I tell I used to tell everyone to do their cardio to lose the weight eat right eat more vegetables do your cardio so as you can kind of tell with my videos and you will tell if you continue to watch them. When I say like how to get better at certain things, it's not just going to be like, well, okay, to become a better runner, you should, uh, you know, just um, run and you know don't fall over and run a lot and run, run, run. And did I mention run? No, it's not just about running. It's about a lot of different things. It all is connected. Nutrition, exercise. And recovery so all three of those things are important for all elements of healing all elements of sports everything you can't look at one fitness magazine that doesn't explain three of those things all of it and if it doesn't explain all those things you are looking at the wrong magazine you need to sleep what do you think people do after the marathon's done? Do you think they're running that next day? It's an awesome caterpillar over there. Check this out. That thing is awesome. Yes, I love life.
all forms of it. Anyway, um, what do you think they're doing after their race? Do you think they're waking up the next day? Yeah, I feel like going for a run. No, they are resting. They are fueling. They're getting their nutrition in. And then they are resting. They are sitting down on their couch or even laying down. And they are resting, trying to recover so their risk for injury drastically reduces so they don't have to retire from their events so they can run another day. When mine was done, I mean, the next day, I had to, like, use my hands to get myself to maneuver to basically being able to walk places. It took me, like, three or four days to really get back into even going to the gym to even exercise because I was in so much pain and my energy was just shot. I would just hang out in the bathtub, lay down, cold water, let all you know my joints just repair and um, other than that I was just sitting, just eating getting my healthy fats, getting my proteins, getting my carbs in. Within two and a half weeks, I was running again. Like it never happened. Now after that run, I was like, oh, I'm never gonna run again. That was insane. That's ridiculous. I'm gonna become a bodybuilder now. I was eating like five, six chicken breasts. I was just packing the food. I was full when I was still eating. I wanted to gain so much mass by clean bulking. And then I even got into sprinting because if you look at a sprinter's body compared to a marathoner's body, complete night and day. So I, would, I got into sprinting. I was eating, lifting heavy, and sprinting. I felt like I was gaining more power. I did it for like two or three days. And even those two or three days, I felt like I had so much energy. But then I was just like getting tired of packing in the food. And I was, I was like feeling better. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to run again. I'm going to get back into running. So I just went back to my routine and continued to run. Now, your lifestyle may play a role in the how much you can run. I mean, I didn't run this year. I was working, in, well, yeah, in fact, I was working that night. I did an overnight. The run was at 7. I got up at 6 in the morning. And I was depressed. I was like, I should be there right now. And then I um, seen it on the news and I was like, oh man, a year ago I was down there and it was the best, not the best day of my life, but it was the, it was like probably, it was the best day of my life. Other than being born, I guess. Because I get to experience all of this. Beautiful nature. So beautiful. I get to experience the opportunity to find myself in this world, help others, and one day make it up there into the clouds with our fantastic King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our Savior, Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. He saved me. The day I got in the running was the day I put out my last cigarette. So, yes, this is related to how to become a better runner. You have to find reason, motivation, inspiration, dedication, whatever. Whatever the word may be, you have to find yourself. And I was like, look, I have kids. I need to do better. I will give you my life if you get me out of this rut. If you help me to feel better. If you find my purpose and let me embrace that and strive upon it so I was like I took one big one one big hit of a crappy brand of cigarettes exhaled looked at it I'm done put on my shoes went out the door that was my day one April 5th 2013 never went back to
the cigarettes. Beautiful feeling. And I was like, okay, my marathon's coming up. I am going. I don't care. I know I only did a few long runs during my training. I was more equipped for a half marathon. But I said, you know what? I don't care. I am going to get under three and a half hours. Mark my words. That day, across the finish line, three hours, 17 minutes, 44 seconds. Now, I was 12 minutes off from qualifying for Boston, but hey, I was still, what, 13 minutes um, above my goal. At 13, it's a good number, it's a biblical number, so that was that was a sign right there. So have strength. Trust in your Lord and Savior, and He will guide you. Do it for the right reasons. Run for the right reasons. God wants us to heal. He gave us these bodies. And in the good book, it says to honor your body as a temple. So do it. Do it. Quit your smoking. Quit your drinking. Stay sober. Now, I'm not judging. I'm pointing out the behavior that we shouldn't do anymore. It helped me become a better person. I wasn't able to breathe. I had heart palpitations. I watched my mother. Well, I didn't even watch her. I wasn't there at the hospital. But I watched her go through her cancer. And the day she died, it was because of her metastatic lung cancer. And I quit before she brought up her cancer. I quit in April. She died in September 2013. And it's all right. I mean, she did it to herself. It was her life choices. And she died younger. So, and she's not the only one that's going to go. People are dying every day. That's what got me into running. To heal my lungs. So, to sum it up. Eat complex carbs. Brown rice. Whole wheat, if you're going to do the bread root. Whole wheat pasta. Drink lots of water. Get out there and run daily. Take your rest days, but don't just say it's a rest day just to get out of running. Strengthen your mind. Don't follow your heart. The heart is deceitful. But follow Jesus Christ, and you will be a better runner automatically because he knows your heart. And he knows if you want it bad enough. And he will help you get there. Do it for the right reason. I'm trying to inspire you. I'm trying to get myself better. Ultimately, I want you to inspire others. Give them hope. So they can 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 give them hope. And it just keeps going and going until the end. Because we won't be here forever. But the ones after us need to know what we have accomplished. So we do the hard work so that they don't have to. I love you all. Peace.